So if you're a student that is nervous about critical path analysis coming up on your A-level business exam, you need to join the back of an incredibly long queue because year after year after year, CPA is the topic that causes the most doubt, the most nerves, and the most confusion among students when they are revising. And many of them are desperate to tear open that exam paper and find out that critical path is not on there. I'm the absolute opposite. Every year I am praying for critical path analysis to be on the exam paper, because it's hard. And when there's hard topics, there are students that won't be able to answer that question. And that's good. If we can be one of the students that can answer the tough questions, then it acts as a differentiator. It means that we're picking up marks when other students aren't, and it's what's gonna separate the high grades from the middle and the lower grade. So critical path is to be devoured. It is a treat. If we can get ourselves to understand it and we can answer it on the exam paper, it's gonna mean that we are gonna have a competitive advantage against all of the other people sitting that exam. However, there's no denying it's a tricky little topic. It takes a little bit of work to understand it. I am of the firm belief that one of the main reasons why students have problems with it is because they don't understand the concept in its entirety. They might be taught part of it, but because they're not taught the full story, they don't really understand that fraction of critical path analysis that they are studying. So let's tell you the whole story. We're gonna do four different videos on critical path analysis. In this one, we're just gonna explain what the concept is and why businesses even use it. In our second one, we're gonna do a full worked through practice example of how you draw out a critical path diagram. In the third one, we're gonna show you what you may well get asked to do in your exam, and that's to make changes to an already completed network diagram. And in the final one, we're gonna pretend that we might get asked a longer question that's asking us to evaluate critical path Path analysis, discuss some of its strengths and limitations. So we'll set you up for that question if it comes up as well. But let's just discuss what it is, okay? We know that firms want to be efficient. We know that acting and operating efficiently is an absolutely huge uh, activity that businesses are obsessed with. One tool that can help them with that is network diagrams or critical path analysis. Critical path analysis is about trying to help firms identify the most efficient way of getting a project done. Whatever that project might be, it could be opening a new branch, it could be expanding into a new market or a new country, it could be just the development of a new product. Any of those activities are going to involve a lot of different stages, a lot of different steps. You know, we could be working on market research, we could be doing some advertising, we could be hiring some new workers, we could be sourcing new suppliers. A big project is going to involve a lot of activities being involved. And one way firms can try and make that process as efficient as they can is to identify any opportunities that there might be to get multiple tasks underway at the same time. What we refer to as simultaneous engineering opportunities. Now let's give you some real life examples so you can understand what these are. Let's imagine that we are brushing our teeth as part of our daily routine. And when you brush your teeth, there's lots of different activities involved. You've got to put toothpaste on the bristles, you've got to brush, you've got to rinse, you've got to do all these different parts all these different activities involved in brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth is what we call a linear process. You can only do one part of that at a time. For example, you can't brush at the same time as squeezing toothpaste onto the bristles. It just wouldn't work. It's not kind of physically possible. You can only do one stage of the brushing the teeth process at a time. It's completed in a linear fashion. Now, when businesses are completing their own projects and activities, they're not like that, they're not entirely linear. There are plenty of opportunities to be doing multiple activities concurrently at the same time. Imagine another household activity like making a cup of tea. Some of those stages we might do in a linear fashion, but a lot of them we can get done at the same time. So imagine we fill the kettle up and then we put it on to boil. Whilst that kettle is boiling, we could just stand whistling a tune and looking pretty, and once it's boiled, decide, well, maybe we need a cup, maybe we need the milk. But if we were to be more efficient, we could get all of those little tasks done 
whilst our kettle is in the corner of the room happily boiling away. That would take advantage of simultaneous engineering opportunities. Whilst that kettle's boiling, we're getting cups from the cupboard, we're getting tea bags out and throwing them in there, we're getting the milk from the fridge, we're whirring around doing all of these tasks whilst our kettle's boiling to make the process more efficient. That's exactly what critical path analysis does. It takes all of the activities that a business might need to complete as part of a project, works out which of those need to have been completed before something else can be done, but also identifies whether there's any opportunities to do activities at the same time as each other in order to save time. Now, essentially what critical path analysis does is it allows organizations to be leaner. It allows organizations to plan out the most efficient time frame for completing a project so it can get it done in a shorter period. Now that's got a couple of distinct advantages for business organizations. First of all, you will have studied investment appraisal. You will know what payback is and how you calculate the payback period. And the sooner we can get a project completed. The sooner if our project is um, opening a new branch, the sooner we can get it open. Or if our project is launching a new product, the sooner we can get it onto the shelves. The quicker we can achieve a project, the sooner it's going to start making revenue for us. The sooner it's going to start paying back some of the initial cost of it. So firms are absolutely obsessed with finding how the quickest, most efficient way is of completing a project, because then if they're done more quickly, they can start returning funds to the business more quickly. So that will aid that project in returning some of the cash that's invested at a more rapid rate, and that's attractive to business organizations. Another reason why calculating how quickly and efficiently a project can be done is useful to organizations is if firms are in a rush to get something to market. You know, imagine lots of firms, when they're perhaps on activities like launching new products, they might be up against rivals who are trying to get their products onto the market at the same time. And uh, if they're competing to see who can be first on the market, using critical path analysis to find the most efficient, quickest time frame to complete a project is useful to business organizations. If they can be the first firm to get their project, their product out there and their project completed, some pretty tasty advantages of that. The firm can become uh, the first one to release their products, which automatically makes it easier to start developing a brand name and some kind of consumer awareness out there. You start to be able to gobble up market share and amass sales whilst your rivals are still sort of getting their product to market and still completing stages of that project. You might also benefit from what's called first mover advantages as well. The benefits of being the first firm that has that project completed and that new product out there on the market. And that might be that you are able to establish some customer loyalty, you are able to develop a stronger brand name, you are able to help set the prices in that market because you're the first firm to release it. You might even be able to um, launch at a higher price than rivals who arrive in the market later because you're the first firm in there, so you're the only one that's available. Consumers don't have choice, so that might encourage to pay a higher price for the product that you've just launched there. So there's real advantages for firms of using critical path analysis, getting projects completed in the most efficient time frame possible, and potentially when they're launching new products, getting them onto the market before rivals. So that is why we are completing critical path analysis. And sometimes I find students don't understand this topic because they don't know why businesses are using it. It's all to do with efficiency, with being lean, with getting projects completed in the shortest time frame possible, identifying simultaneous engineering opportunities. It's all about when we're talking about new products, getting them onto the market in the shortest time frame possible because all of these things are advantageous for organizations. You've got to check out our other videos where we're going to do a walkthrough of how you complete a critical path diagram. We're going to show you how to make changes to them like you might get asked to do in the exam. We're even going to evaluate the usefulness of critical path as a concept. So make sure you watch this four-parter. In the meantime, Keep on taking the beers. Good luck with your revision. See you soon.